How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern, Saturday mornings with Jim Valley, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 Eastern, Sundays, Andrew Zarian, and it is Tuesday here on the show, and you know what that means? we got a lot to get into. NXT is tonight. AW Dynamite is tomorrow. And last night was Monday Night Raw. We've got about a week and a half, two weeks, until the big WWE Elimination Chamber show in Australia. At this point, Bronson Reed will not be on the show. I don't know what the heck is going on there. But we will talk about that today, the Raw show from last night, and plenty more. SmackDown Friday is going to be a big show. Logan Paul is on the show in a match. He will be facing The Miz on television. And The Rock and Roman Reigns will both appear. The show should do a gigantic number. And I got something I want to say about The Rock and Roman Reigns after the break, which maybe somebody could clear up for me, but doubtful. Steve Austin and CM Punk, will they have a match together someday? I guess the answer is maybe. Tony Khan talked about making AEW a safe working environment. Our own Rocky Romero, I shouldn't call him our own, but he's been on the show so many times he's basically our own. Now also working for AEW. He's got 75,000 jobs in this business, so all the best to him. We got a lot of notes on Collision, Rampage, and SmackDown numbers. All the shows did very well this week, so that's good news. And as noted, the Raw report as well. If you'd like to text us here today, we should have a lot of time. For your feedback, 425-780-7566 is the text message line. 425-780-7566. F4W online at gmail.com. F4W online. Threads, Instagram, and Cameo. At Brian Elbers on Twitter. X. Back in a moment. Observer Live. Welcome to the special tour of Figure Four Weekly Headquarters, as promised. Today I will be accompanied by my assistant Vincenzo, so let's get moving. Hey, don't worry about it. Today's a special day, I'll drive. Today's going to be a good day, so let's not F anything up, okay? Now, I'd like to tell everybody, I just want to give a short speech on the way to uh, the compound here today, and that is that we are going through very tough economic times right now. Right, Vince? It's a time of uh, stock market crashing, the yen is devalued, a time of woe and want. and. Many of you watching this right now, for all I know, are unemployed. But the good thing is, and I always like to look on the bright side, as Vince is well aware, the good news is that for every dark cloud, there is a silver lining. And the silver lining is that Figure Four Weekly is doing great. It's a huge success right now. Subscriptions are up, quality is down, Profit margins are skyrocketing. Things are going very well. So the one thing is that I don't want to make it seem like money is everything because money cannot buy happiness. But what it can buy is enormous houses. And that makes me happy. So we will be going to see my enormous house, the Figure Four Weekly Compound. And uh, that's where we're heading right now.
Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. I don't even know why I'm starting with this, except I'm a glutton for punishment. Mm. I can only imagine how mad people are going to get, but tough luck. If you don't like it, have your own show. So, I was thinking about this Rock, Roman Reigns, Cody thing that's going on right now. All right. And... You know, I've been hearing a lot from people over the last couple of days. What a... I don't know. I can't even say the word on the air. Poop show? Sure, yeah. God, they go this way, they go that way. It's so convoluted. What a mess. Cody gives up his spot, then he gets his spot back. Blah, blah, blah. Now, I'm going to make it abundantly clear. See, Lenny's already on. He's on fire. It's stupid! Okay, listen. All right. Do you remember a year ago? I do. I don't know how. But last year, we had Roman Reigns as champion, and they had a plan. And that was Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes at WrestleMania. Okay? Now, I still believe to this day that Cody was supposed to win last year, and Vince waltzed in that weekend and changed it. I believe that. It makes sense. You look at the post-WrestleMania booking... All of the post-WrestleMania booking makes makes way more sense if Cody's champ than if he's not champ. He's facing Brock. Roman Reigns is doing nothing but tag matches and vacations. It makes much more sense that Cody was supposed to win, but that got changed like the day of the show. But doesn't matter. Regardless. Cody and Roman was the main event of WrestleMania, right? Okay. Yes. So, then... We had uh, that that uh, that show with Drew challenging for the title. And everybody was like, man, you know, maybe sh- Drew should win. Clash at the castle. Clash at the castle. Maybe Drew should win. Like, he's hot. This is the moment. Let's do it. Well, they didn't. They stuck to their plan. Okay? Well, then we had the Sami Zayn deal in Montreal. Even I said, you know what? This is freaking hot. Like, maybe he should win the title from Roman. What happened? He didn't. They stuck to their plan. Right? Yes. Tell me when I'm telling lies. Okay? So, they've been spending a year building up to Rock and Cody again. Or, I'm sorry, uh, Roman Reigns and Cody again. Well, who waltzes in and gets a spot on the board in $30 million? The Rock. Cody wins the Royal Rumble. Again, stop me when I'm telling lies here. Cody wins the Rumble. He's supposed to show up on SmackDown and say who he's going to face. We're going to finally get this big moment. Well, the guy shows up. They do an angle. And he says, I actually, you know what? I, I'm not going to challenge you at Rumble. Guy's practically crying. Can't even keep a straight face. Rock shows up waltzes his way into the ring, gives Cody the handshake and the hug, which Cody clearly wants virtually nothing to do with, and Cody walks away, okay? And so Rock and Roman Reigns have a stare down, and what happens that weekend? Everybody turns on it. They don't want to see it. We get the we want Cody thing. We have death threats towards Ava. Like... Rock is totally booed out of the building. It's clearly a match that nobody wants to see. Okay? Well, they go to the thing on Thursday, and what do they do? They get back to Cody versus Roman. Now, you could say, well, maybe that was the plan the entire time. Well, maybe it was. But you know what? It's really weird that Cody won the Royal Rumble... And then they shot an angle where he gave up his spot. He didn't come out and say, you know, just the whole promo and then say, you know, I, I want to take everything from you. Rock's music hits. Rock comes out. He has a stare down. And that's the segment. And Cody doesn't make a decision. Like in the storyline, Cody made a decision. I will not face you at Mania. I will step aside. That's a really weird thing to do if this was the plan the entire time. And as Dave noted yesterday, well... And no, Cody was supposed to win the Rumble. Don't start that. They had Cody winning the Rumble shirts out immediately. That was the plan the entire time. 
So my point here is, you know, Dave noted yesterday that they had a they had a special on E about The Rock that was filmed last week. Rock's talking about his kids. And you know what happened? They said on the show that it is The Rock and Roman Reigns in the main event of WrestleMania, taped a week ago. So what I actually think happened was Rock showed up, decided this is going to be the year, decided he was taking that main event or whatever. They shifted and they shot the angle. The fans totally rejected it. And I think, to their credit, they shifted back to Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes. And everybody complaining about how it's stupid and it's convoluted and it's idiocy. Yeah, you know what they did is they had an idea and it didn't work and so they changed course. So we should actually be happy don't, about don't, that. Wait, hold on. Don't you act indignant towards fans I am that indignant. thought it sucked? No, Listen it did yourself. suck. Stop. It did oh suck. Oh, my God. My point is... My you point is, puffing up here. last oh, they year, changed course. no, Adam, That's mute what's you. Up. You're not listening. Last year, everybody cried because they wouldn't change course. They cried about it. They wouldn't change course. This year, it appears they did change course, and people are still crying about it. So my point is, what do you want? You want to stick with Rock and down. Roman Reigns? Calm down. That's what I want you to do. Yes, we should be happy they changed course, but exactly, Brian, it does not give them a free pass for fans to look at this and blow it, want them to blow it out their rear end because that's what they've been doing. It's convoluted. It's messy. At the time all of this is going on with real world issues, makes it even worse. It's like, what the hell is going on with this place? Everything has been so foolish and silly in this lead up. It's just been convoluted. So, yeah, I guess if you want to be just so firm in your stance that now everybody needs to shut up and, and be happy with the fact that they turned back course. No, we don't have to be quite happy about that yet. We got to see what the rest of this build is, including how, if possibly, they play a tag title match or a, or a tag team match into one of these nights. I think we are getting a tag match. If The Rock's presence overshadows Cody's story, uh, again, we'll ha we'll see what happens with this. But uh, man, I am surprised you are this fired up that people should now be happy. With I the didn't fact say they should be happy. Course. I asked a question: Why were you angry last year that they refused to change course, and then this year when they changed course to what the people actually want, it's like, oh, it's convoluted booking and they're blah blah blah. Yeah, the thing where Cody said, "I don't want the match." That was the whole thing was, was stupid. stupid. It's the same. And, it hasn't and you know been what it is, Brian? No, Listen, it hasn't been explained. I don't yet. want to blame Dwayne. You can, but seems to me that like last year, this whole thing got screwed up because of Vince, and this year, old Dwayne walks in, tried to screw it up again. Dwayne washing. And I will give them fronts. credit for like going back and going, brother. They don't want to see this. Maybe it was his idea. Maybe he went. You know what? They're right. I, I do not eye. want to go in and get booed in a singles match against Roman Reigns for twenty minutes in my final match. My third eye, my conspiracy brain understands that this was an attempt at 4D chess. They did all of this knowing to try to take your mind off of all of this real life stuff that is taking place and the rock being on the board and the lawsuit and all this other stuff. We're going to make this so messy that people will be distracted from the nonsense and the messiness that we are in real life with our messy storyline. That's what conspiracy I don't think it was 4D chess at all. I think they had a plan last year and this old idiot walked in and changed it. He thought he had some better idea. And then this year, they did the whole thing again. And then come January, Rock gets $30 million and a spot on the board, and he gets to do what he wants. But turns out he didn't get to do what he wanted. Or maybe he does want to do this. Maybe this was his call after they got the reaction he got. Because don't even tell me he was expecting to get this kind of heat. I think he's fine getting heat. He's got the Cody Crybaby shirt. But not, we want to kill your daughter heat. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Getting to, um, 
I want to go ahead and shift into Continental Classic because you just mentioned it. Uh, a really, really great tournament that AEW has put together with top-notch competitors. I mean, you got to go in there with Andrade, with Brian Danielson. Loved uh, seeing you guys go to the time limit draw. That was awesome. Uh, Daniel Garcia, young guy in this who's been killing it. Eddie Kingston, Brody King. Uh, all of these people that you got to mix it in with. What was your impression when you first heard of the Continental Classic that this was going to be happening? And how did you feel getting to take part in the first one and in the tournament of this caliber? Um, I was very excited, you know. Um, <laughs> right before I uh, joined AEW, uh, I was I was extremely close. Like, <laughs> probably a couple of days away uh, before doing the G1 for New Japan. And I always want to do the G1. And I still owe him one, I feel like. So um, to do the Continental Classic, um, I was super excited. And it also, to me, um, I feel like I'm at my best when I get into a routine, so to speak. And with the Continental Classic, it's like, you know you wrestle every week. And like then again, like looking back, I was like, I pretty much wrestled every week multiple times. Uh, <laughs> so uh, but to me, to me, it's always like, okay, every cool. And then I looked at the both groups and uh, like all the talent announced, which is awesome. Cause I was like, yeah, yeah. There's like, there's not one person that I wouldn't want to be in the ring with. And then um, I saw the, the brackets or whatever. And I, you know, the blue group and I'm like, this is like, every single competitor is like top level. Every single competitor, it's going to be fun and a big challenge and every match is going to be different. Right. So um, I think, I mean, the gold group was, fun to watch as well but i feel like the blue group just had like so many different styles and competitors in it and it was so much fun not just for for me i feel like my you know fellow competitors as well and for the, the viewers because you kind of knew what matches you were getting i mean like you knew what the matches were like right when you look at it, you're like oh my god i'm gonna get all those matches but you didn't really know quite when you know so it's like it's it's still that like cool and then it gets announced and it's cool and you can look forward to it. Um, and then of course it all came down to the last day, which was a lot of fun. I feel like for, for everybody watching and it's not quite over yet. So it's, you know, it's, it's been a very good thing, uh, for AW and, and the fans. And I just brought it down to, to me, what wrestling is because it's fun, it's sports, it's storytelling. And, um, you know, I, You've seen all the guys do like the, the interviews and the promos and then like the matches and it's just everybody put their heart and soul into it and you can tell. Man, people think I hate the chat, but this guy's got the best idea I've seen in a long time. Dirty Dom beats Kevin Owens because of Logan Paul. And then Logan Paul screws Kevin Owens, so they face off at Mania or whatever. He gets into Elimination Chamber. Dom wins the Chamber match. Dom goes on to WrestleMania. He beats Seth Rollins. Oh, my God. And then Priest immediately cashes in on him. I like that a lot. Oh, I like on. that a lot. Wait a second. Do you like that? He'd more? be the most over babyface on the entire well, roster. Could he not if he did just that. do that with Drew McIntyre and then just completely pee in Drew McIntyre's corner? Well, of course he give could. Him? Of course he could. That way. That of would course be... he could. But but you know that Priest is breaking it away from be these, as funny. these guys. <laughs> and that is an awesome way to do it. <laughs> That's... I like that. Oh, man. A bunch of bribe babies in there. All righty. <laughs> bribe babies. There are bribe babies all over in this chat. I'm going to make that shirt. DJ, <laughs> I'll, I'll split it with you. Will you make it like the Muppet Babies thing? And Lenny, you got to wear it because you lost uh, two bets to me now, <laughs> if I recall correctly. He lost. I told him that it was going to be Cody versus Roman at Mania. He did not believe me. He was absolutely positive that was not going to happen. There was no chance. He was wrong. He was absolutely positively wrong. 
about uh, what was the other one? Oh yeah, uh, who, uh, Jay White beating MJF. Yes. So brother, you need to wear that Bri Baby shirt when I get it printed up. <laughs> yep. All right. What else do we have tonight? Not NXT. Much. Not much. Tonight NXT. <laughs> I got a buddy there who goes, "You're gonna, you're, you're gonna be wrong about this one." Oh yeah. Kiana James and Brinley Reese, Lola Vice and Tatum Paxley, and Adriana Rizzo and Jada Parker. Three women's matches on one show, all featuring almost entirely green talent. I say, I will say, green. Kiana is not green. We got forest green. We got pine green. How many shades of green do we have there? No, he knows I love the show. He also knows I don't think this is going to be very good at all. <laughs> we got Tony D and Stax versus Braun Breaker and Baron Corbin. I like that. See, this this actually depresses me because I wish that Braun and Baron had done this a year ago so they could do a one-year run as, like, the greatest tag team in all the wrestling. But I don't know what's going to happen. Maybe they could win, but obviously Braun's go to the main roster sooner rather than later. Carmelo Hayes and Joe Gacy. could possibly care less about Joe Gacy's character, so whatever. Then we got Ridge Holland versus all three of Gallus. I I got nothing against Gallus, but I don't care. Like, I just don't care. Why does everybody bully Ridge? I mean, I, we have all of these other, like, you know, teen NBC 90s style moments. Like, why can't somebody befriend Ridge Holland? Why is he all on his own there? Like, him walking around inside, like, the, the confines of the performance center is what life is like for people in the parking lot, usually. Like, he got he has to come to work every day and expect to get beat up by three people and have no friends or backup whatsoever. Odd. I don't get this chat sometimes. Like, this guy here... Jingo says, Brian loves zany WWE NXT. Bro, I'm sitting here telling you how I don't think this NXT show is going to be good at all. I shouldn't say it all. I do expect the tag team title match to be really say, good. Look, which, by the not... way, is not zany at all. There is nothing zany about Braun Breaker and Baron Corbin. Unless you consider death and violence zany, which I do not. Is Izzy is Dame zany? And then we've she got add anything to your girl Kiana I'll, James's character. I'll tell you what could be zany: Von Wagner and Mr. Stone versus Noam Dar and Oro Mensa. What, what is and going I am looking on with forward to that. This? Why is with his kids there? And we are getting a lot of Mr. Stone. Like we are really getting cranked up on Mr. Stone here. Are we getting ready to see not only the possibility of Carmelo and Braun on the main roster, but Mr. Stone and Von Wagner on the main roster? It's what this is feeling like. Yeah, but don't you forget that Von Wagner was on the main roster for like two days, and yes, then we never was... saw him again. Well, yeah. Vince probably saw him for the first time and was like, get that guy on. Well, now he's gone. And then this guy goes, Brian was fully against Ruby Soho, Outcast, Cool Hand Story until he started watching Rampage and loved it. I did? <laughs> you started watching Rampage? Okay, I'm Brian. The other fella is Vinny. Vinny was the guy that really liked that one segment. Okay, I'm not Vinny. I do not love that storyline. It's whatever. What does Tom come down on this? I don't think Tom's watching it either. No. And I also, I, did you not listen to the show this weekend where you know, I was talking about how this uh, split between Ruby and Soraya just felt like it was out of the blue? Like they were building it up during a tag match and then she just walked out on her and it just was done like that? I could not say that this is my favorite AEW storyline or even close. I don't know if it was out of But thank the you for not listening. Word. Yeah. Apparently you're not watching. Oh, don't forget it's the date. What date? Thea Hale. Oh. oh. Thea and uh, that other bloke. Yeah, Valentine's Day tomorrow, guys. Yeah. It is. Tomorrow, the Valentine's Day Dynamite. This also does not feel like a blowaway show. Young Bucks versus Top Flight. Adam Copeland, Daniel Garcia... Winner gets Christian. I'll move on. Sky Blue and Willow Nightingale, which I think we've seen some form of that match about 50 times. We'll hear from Hangman Joe and Swerve. And Tony Storm premieres Wet Ink. Wet Ink. That's it. That's all we know. Mm. Are you going to be watching, or are you going to be going out with your with your woman, dropping the kids off somewhere, and... And enjoying your on Valentine's a school Day night, evening. not happening. No, no, sparks over, huh? Extinguished. 
You stay what are you talking about? I just said not on a school night. Well, I'm just asking. There are you. weekends. Are you defensive? I there's mean, plenty are things more. Things okay over there? I, I, things are quite fine. You in sure? fact, you'll know next week when you're doing the show half the time because I'm in an exotic location. But I will be doing most of the shows, everybody, so don't get on me. <laughs> Portland? I'm going back to Hawaii. Okay. I know we just went, but, like, things worked out. School break. Hey. I'm bringing all the equipment. I'll be doing Thank all you, the shows. <laughs> bringing all your equipment you can, up. You can look at the sunshine in the background. It'll be nice. <laughs> It'll be nice. Oh, man. <laughs> Just don't go to those Black Sands. I've heard they're very disappointing. I'm not going to Melt Black Sand Beach. I'm going to a shoot sand beach. <laughs> not this gimmick sand. <laughs> gimmick sands? Yeah, ridiculous. Get out of here. Steve Austin is not closing the door on competing in the ring again. Came out of retirement, Mania 38. First match in nearly two decades. Beat Kevin Owens, which actually was a really good match. Interview with ESPN. 59-year-old Austin. Apparently he's been watching Sting. Didn't rule out the possibility of another match. He said, I'd never get in the ring again unless all the stars aligned. For some reason, somehow they did. At the age of 57, headlined the first night of Mania. Never thought I'd do that. If you'd have told me that when I retired in 2003, I'd have said, you're crazy. So I'm not going to sit here and say no to anything, because you never say never in this crazy business of sports entertainment. When asked about whether he had an idea of what opponent... He would like in his perhaps career final match. He said he did, but he did not want to mention the name because he was not promoting the match, nor did he want to add pressure on WWE or the foe, says here, to make it happen. (laughs) When asked about potentially facing Punk, Austin did say the matchup quote would be a good one. I like Punk, he says. I think Punk likes me. I thought that once. So as long as he can take a stunner, I consider him a great friend. Great guy and a great wrestler who's had a great career. I'm pretty sure just about anybody could take a stunner. I'm sure that Punk right now oh, yeah. could take I a think, stunner with his injury. I, I think we've seen over time there are people who can Actually, take Actually, there is one guy. Vince? Who could not take a stunner, and it was Vince. And Linda was not a pro stunner taker either, if I recall correctly. There were some other... <laughs> <laughs> there were some other bad stunners, but yeah, for the most part, it was impossible to take a stunner, even if you didn't know how to take it because you would just come down and crack your chin on the, the top of his shoulder, and he would laugh at you and pour beer on you. I was talking about Austin would get hurt, he would gas out, etc. Guys, he wrestled Kevin Owens two years ago. It was great. Well, he was did not get of... hurt. He did not get gassed out. He gimmicky. did a ton of stuff, and it was good. And it, he, Again, a big gimmick match like that, or look... We are, we have already established it, even though we have not seen much of it since Bray Wyatt. We have had cinematic matches. One of The Undertaker's last matches was a cinematic adventure with AJ Styles. For them to do some sort of half cinematic, half live of thing at WrestleMania with Steve Austin and somebody, I could absolutely see that happening. Absolutely see DJ that. says it was two years ago. Yeah, it was. And Rock hasn't wrestled in 10 years. Of the two of them, I'm far more worried about The Rock going into Mania this year than Steve Austin. Although, at least it'll be a tag match. Hell, I never tore my stomach muscles. Tony Khan detailed what AEW's doing to create a safe working environment. Told fans cited. <laughs> it's a great question. You ever notice all the questions people ask Tony are great? That's yes. It's always a great question. Great. I can't comment on the terrible allegations against WWE right now. I think Thanks, that's guys. something people are paying a lot of attention to right now with good reason. First and foremost, trying to create a safe locker room environment for everybody, women and men. We have a good bond. I think we have a great locker room. I think everybody knows there's a support system here, a lot of channels. I think everybody feels very good about having a safe place and a safe workplace. There are people you can talk to. There are people in the office, even on the wrestling side. For us, I think it's the most important thing. In any office, of any workplace... It's just having a lot of people that will listen and want to make the company a good, safe place to work. That's what he has to say. That's right. Get rid of CM Punk, and that helps things, apparently. Back in a moment, Observer Live.
fish could swim this far up shore. Yeah. Shoulders ran like the wind, but he could find no peace. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Rocky Romero, now working in the office at AEW and working for New Japan still. Mm-hmm. You remember he was on the show a while ago, and I said, how do, you, how do you do all this? You do New Japan and CMLL, and you're traveling all over in your office, and you're wrestling, and he goes, I don't know. I don't know how I do it. Now he's got another job. So, uh... Happy for him. I know a lot of people there are very happy for him. So hopefully it works out great. Yeah, I wonder what it's like to be a quadruple agent. Because another thing in my conspiracy mind that people have turned me on to in your board today, I found out that apparently there are people online very upset with Rocky Romero. You see, Rocky Romero is a double agent, Brian. Rocky Romero may be the funnel. Rocky Romero may be Todd Gordon. He may be Bill Alfonso. He may be the person funneling people down to WCW, or, or should I say AEW, the new WCW, Tony Khan's WCW. He's the reason that all of these people are leaving New Japan Pro Wrestling. He should be ashamed of himself, apparently, Brian. Lenny well, goes, when you love what you're doing, you're not working. That's a nice old saying, but I love what I'm doing, and yeah. I work a lot. Yeah, and sometimes much... it really feels like working. Yeah. Let go, me go tell you. Go have your car break down and tell the guy you're going to pay for it with love. See what he does to you. That hour-long yeah. cage match on New yeah. Japan. I loved it, but it was work. That was <laughs> Sometimes love hurts. It Brian. was work. We had good numbers this week. Collision. 491,000 viewers and a .15 which is a very good number. Rampage, 456,000, and a .14, which is a very good number. Yeah. And my God, this SmackDown. 2.6 million viewers and a .75. You know, I hesitate to even say this because I don't want people writing a bunch of stupid stories. Good. So as always, let me just begin by saying that this is speculation do not report this yeah i'm not reporting anything okay but i was thinking about this the other day smackdown did 2.6 million viewers and a 0.75 okay that's a gigantic number 
You know, we've been talking about this for a while. It is very possible that sometime in the next couple of months, SmackDown is going to be the number one show on all of television over the course of a full week. The number one story, the number one show on all of television, all television, in a full week will be SmackDown. It's never happened before in the history of wrestling. Ever. Going back to jo- Gorgeous George on the Dumont Network, mm-hmm. you know, Dave notes that um, now he's trying to claim it wasn't $33 million for Hogan and, uh, and Andre. Don't try closer that, to, brother. It's closer to 21, Brian. But the point is, you know, that even that was like in, you know, it was like ranked 25 or something for the week. So many people were watching television. So for wrestling. Well, Dave, Dave forgets that we all didn't have cable at that time either, you know. For wrestling to be number one, number one. Numero uno. On all of television for a week is crazy. And it's SmackDown on Fox. Yeah. And of course, SmackDown is going to USA because, you know, Fox didn't want to pay what they wanted. Because, quite frankly, there is the issue with pro wrestling. I mean, you know, you're not making .75 like you would for football or something like that when you look at the advertisers and everything. Well, your BS there there is that issue. The BS line didn't work with them anyway because they were promised a 1.0. And unlike Bonnie Hammer in USA, who has a long relationship, if you don't hit a number that you say, or if you're dealing with somebody else, Fox looked at that and said, we're not getting a return on our investment. But here's the it's point. Gone. Here's the point. They did not pick up SmackDown. No. SmackDown's going to USA. NXT is about to be the top show on CW. Yeah. By a wide margin. Maybe the top yeah. show in all of wrestling. And I'll really have the last laugh. Oh, all of TV. Come on. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, obviously Raw is going to to Netflix. So what's my point? I don't know. My point is Fox is giving up this show that was getting a Point seven five, okay. Everyone's talking about WBD. What could what could AEW get for their next deal? I think that it is possible. I have no inside information whatsoever, but I think it is possible that Fox might make a big offer to AEW. Because Fox is not going to pay $400 million for WWE. Would they pay $150 million to get Dynamite on Fox? Like, Dynamite wouldn't do a .75, but would they pay $175 million to get what they think might be a, a .4? I don't know. I do not think that this is out of the realm of possibility. I do. You can all laugh at me now. I do. But I do not uh, think this is out of the realm of possibility. Well, here's the thing. I don't I don't and put it where? On the Fox network or I mean that's the only place it could go. I mean, if you're putting it on FX, that would be Disney. I mean, I could see at, at Disney wanting to put it on an FX because it, it would it immensely prop up what that station is doing. I can see a lot of cable companies absolutely wanting it. The only reason I can see Fox wanting it is because I think FS1 is built different than ESPN, and I think you can pull off on a Wednesday night having AEW there, but the problem is then you you really damage Rampage if it sticks around and definitely Collision because look at all of the programming that they are that they have to fulfill when it comes to college football and basketball and all that stuff. So I I don't Look, if they came with the money, I would take the money. And the fact that you'd be on Fox. Hell I mean, yeah, you'd take the money. Sure. And and the fact that I mean, Fox is, gives you some prestige, but I don't know how that deal works the best. For, I, I honestly, I can't see it working for either side very well in, in the long run. Well, I it would work well for, dude, AW on Fox with a huge increase would work just fine for AW. I, would it yeah, work just I fine guess. for Fox? That's the question. But that's, it wouldn't. And I that's can't the see question. Fox, but, and I could see Fox having the same attitude that the guy at USA did and NBC did when they left and said, we don't want somebody else in here. We don't want a second best. We don't want ECW when they lost uh, Raw to to Paramount or whatever it was at the time. Pop TV. Uh, what what the hell was the name of the station? Spike TV. You know, when they lost it to, to Spike. So 
I, I don't know. Again, Paramount is the interesting one because uh, even though they're doing all of this cost cutting, it's not like they don't have some money to spend and they are the only ones not involved in the wrestling game. And if they want to do something to boost Paramount Plus, then okay, AEW, come over here. It will be a great place for you to put your library. We'll focus on ROH. We'll put you right on the, the main screen. You can watch MTV. You can watch BET. You can watch the, the Godfather movies. And yes, AEW, front and center right there. I think that's a better possibility and a better fit you know, than, than what you're getting with, with Fox. I just, I don't see how that would work at all with Fox. I really don't. I have no idea what you're talking about. The exposure of Fox, a .75 for pro Why would wrestling. Fox want them, Brian? That's what I'm, I, I agree with that. Where, I don't know if Fox would want them. I'm where saying, it, okay, why would AEW not want to be on Fox? No, AEW, absolutely. They would be That's thrilled to be on Fox. That, yeah, if they're, because, look... If there is, if they have any other suitor besides WBD, they're going to be happy about it because it'll drive up some interest from WBD. But the idea of them on Fox is insane. Where do you put them on the schedule? Where do you? Jingu <laughs> saying the AW schedule? will not get a point seven five. You don't say, Brian. Did you Jingu. listen to a word I said, Jingu? I don't know. It's Two not points. about getting a point seven five. It's like, can it do very well? With them paying significantly not, less no. than they paid WWE. Not, not well enough to justify the investment and the cost because if you're looking down at the advertisers when it comes to established product like WWE, which does have mainstream sponsors, if you're not getting it out of them, what are you getting out of Tony Khan? What are you getting out of the AEW product? I don't think you're getting as much as you would have a couple of years ago. I just don't think well, I don't they know. have enough to sell themselves on. I don't know. I'm not saying it's going to happen yeah. at all. I'm saying I don't think it's impossible. I say you you take that effort, and even though you sell yourself to Fox, I, I think you're more, you got to be more realistic about it and look for some of these other places, even a place like an Amazon, even though that's a... <laughs> That's an interesting one, too. Lenny here deals in absolutes. It's, it's so amazing. <laughs> they will never leave WBD again. Ever. What are you talking about? Criminies. How has Lenny not won the prediction show? I've never seen anyone so certain about everything, but he has not won the prediction show yet. I'm waiting. Next year will be your year, Lenny. Let's talk about Raw. All right. Let's talk about the main thing that bothered me. Why is Bronson Reed not wrestling in Australia? He might be. He could Don't be. Don't get that excited. He could yet. be. He could yeah. be. We do only have a week left, and he lost to Lashley in an Elimination Chamber qualifier. And uh, I will say that he's uh, he's on Twitter, like, pretty sad about this. You know, he's tweeting out that he let everybody down. He always wanted to wrestle mm. in Australia. So maybe there's a story here. But I, I came up with my own story. Because Lashley beat Bronson... And then later on the show, they had another uh, qualifier, and uh, and Ivar ended up losing to L.A. Knight. So that means we've got Bronson Reed. <laughs> there are too many Australians. God. <laughs> Thank God you guys aren't bookers. Anyway, we got Ivar, and we got Bronson. Yes. Two men without a match. Hawson. Well, I got a match for you. Mm -hmm. I got a match for you. Bronson Reed versus Ivar. And brother, I won't play. I won't pay for his ticket over there. That's expensive. We got Australia, but man, I'd love to see that match. Meat. Slapping Imagine all those people oh. in that stadium chanting "meat" mm. and going nuts for Bronson Reed. I mean, come on. Or you could just do what Ivar I doesn't do. need to be Australian. You geek. <laughs> Bronson <laughs> needs an opponent. I don't. I, I can see them. Having Bronson Reed attack somebody going into that chamber, which they have not done in a while, laying them out. That way, he gets a big pop, gets into the chamber, doesn't win. He loses in his home country, so his nefarious act doesn't get rewarded completely. But I think it's a way you get a big pop and get him in that main event match. Do it that way. Well, he says Bronson and, and Ivar is a kickoff match material. Fine. Fine. I mean, get him on the show. Get him on the show and have him steal the show in that pre-show match. Beaten. I think that would get a big reaction. I think you would want that as your kickoff match or your possibly your first match on the show. I don't think that's the worst thing in the world. There's no insult there.
but on the show here. Now, what I was uh, baffled about also was uh, I'm going to be interested to see the Raw quarters because the main event of this show was Nakamura, Sami Zayn. And <laughs> that was well, a segment. Like, as we're going to, and I'm thinking, is that really the main event? And then I got thinking about it more, and I was like, why are they wrestling? Like, I have no idea. Because. I have no idea why they're wrestling. It's not a chamber qualifier. <laughs> it's not to win a shot at Mania or, like, there was no reason for the he, match. Shinsuke tapped into the production. He I know. He tapped into the, that's why. But it's okay to have a match where there's, like, no point to it or whatever, but not the main event. Like, the main event should have been a chamber qualifier or some sort of stipulation of some sort. Instead, I'm watching it. It's like, okay, that's cool. I'm blaming Dwayne. I'm blaming Dwayne. I'm not blaming Dwayne for this one. I am. They had a great line, too, where Becky said that she had to explain to her child why her daddy wanted to beat up Maui. I laughed. I laughed. That was good delivery, Becky. Good delivery. Back in a moment. Observer Live. Um, well, I was super excited. Like, um, you know, when I, when I joined the AEW and it was the Blackpool Combat Club, I was like, oh, yeah, it just, like, people ask me, how do you feel? I'm like, I feel like it's just right. Like, it just, yeah, yeah. It's just, I get up another day and it's like, I've always been part of it, you know? And, and, and uh, with Brian again, like, I've known him for almost 20 plus years now, uh, all over the world. Like you said, we've been in the ring um, all over the world and, like, just also just hung out and traveled together for so long. Um, that it's been so much fun, um, you know, just being around him a lot. And, uh, you know, I always mention the, the BCC group chat because it seems to get people jealous that they're not, <laughs> that they're not in it. Um, uh, there's also a, a, a BCC book club, I think, that just got founded. So, yeah. Um, Wait, did that just start? I mean, we just we just started our first book that we were all reading together. So, yeah, I think that's going to be a thing as, as well. Because I know Brian said that he reads three books at the same time. So is he making you guys do this or was this uh, like a joint thing? No, so I feel like uh, so so Brian has been reading for, for a long time and he reads a lot of books. Uh, I think he reads like at least one a week or something like that, which is incredible. Um, I just started reading a lot more this year and i know uh, mox reads quite a bit as well so we were just kind of like oh what if we just kind of do a book club thing we just all read like a similar like the same book and then talk about it and we were like oh, sure yeah why not so uh we're forcing yuda to read as well um no <laughs> i mean like yuda was always reading but you know we're just um, now doing this kind of thing so so it, it that just kind of sums it up how much fun it is it's been with with brian and then uh, to to your second part of the of the question um, you know, if, if, if this is his last uh, year full-time wrestling, I'm extremely happy to have had that match with him. Um, because we were kind of talking, it was like the last couple of matches we had were in front of uh, nobody or screens in the Thunderdome era. And then before that, it was like tag matches and this and that. But like singles-wise, I think it was like a gauntlet match years ago, like that's not 14 or 15 or something like that when I was still with um, Zeb and Swagger. And then obviously, you know, before that Ring of Honor. So it, it's been actually been quite a while. And um, I mean, I was extremely happy that I was able to wrestle him for that long in front of an audience on TV and uh, just go in there and have fun. And, uh, you know, like if he can do it again, like I, I would obviously love to, but if not, I feel like, you know, if, Brian's kind of going, you know, if this is his last year, he's just going down the list of fun stuff that he wants to do. And I was glad to have been part of it. Not so glad about that draw since he cost me the tournament, but, you know, you win some, you lose some. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. Well, tonight, for the Brian and not of any, he's in Calgary still, but Sean and Craig and Granny will be here. We're watching some matches from WrestleMania 35. 
which I went to live. Black History Month. We're going to watch Kofi Mania's culmination as he defeated Brian, Daniel Bryan to win the WWE title. We're going to watch that, plus Triple H and Batista, and Becky Lynch, Ronda Rousey, and Charlotte Flair. I was here in the building. Made me want to never go to WrestleMania again. It must have been the Meadowlands, eh? Not because of the show itself, but because of the uh, everything that happened after the show. <laughs> But we're going to review that tonight. <laughs> Your own personal cow palace moment in it the was parking horrible. lot of East Rutherford, East Rutherford, New Jersey. It was horrible. And then we'll uh, at some point figure out next month. I really want to go back and watch some of those uh, uh, WWF. What are the shows from the 80s that they just added? The weekly show? Spotlight? WWF? Uh, I don't know. Was it uh, Challenge? Challenge. Superstars? Yeah, I almost said Collision. Challenge. <laughs> They've got some like mid 80s WWF Challenge. So I'm thinking maybe we'll do a month of that. You know what you get with that, too. If if nothing else, even though you get some bad squash matches, you get uh, Bobby Heenan and Gorilla Monsoon, and they are excellent together. Yes, they were great. I grew up with them. Mm -hmm. Loved them. Hey, we're out of time. want to thank everybody for listening here today. I'll be back later on tonight, back tomorrow here for more. Check out WrestlingObserver.com, video.f4wonline.com. And that's it. We'll talk to you next time, Wrestling Observer Live.